VR obviously is a huge part of what brings everyone together, um, especially here with Ferality. So what has it been like to make your way into this community and share what you love doing with all the people all over the world? I would say virtual reality really gave me the drive and also the perspective. It is a new medium. There's lots to learn. There's lots right. to explore. Being surrounded by so many other talented people, like it's insane. The, the amount of creativity. We have so many hardworking people in this community and it's very inspiring to be in this field. Waving from the hillside 500 away Take me or just let me go um, I can imagine there's some challenges overall just with like trying to do a performance live while having the VR gear on. The challenge that comes with performing in VR is that you have to have an understanding for a lot of technology, be it simple things like getting your microphone set up, having the right microphone gain so it doesn't clip, all the way to I have to be able to control my OVR toolkit windows in VR to have that window there and that stuff like... <laughs> <laughs> it changes the way artists interact with fans or with a crowd. We've seen the transition before, obviously, from being a, a band in the 80s, then social media boom, right? Artists suddenly had to not only make music, but also represent themselves visually on multiple platforms. I see this as the next step. You can be in a heartbeat in the same world, in the same instance as your favorite creator. Yeah, it's the next frontier between uh, artist and fan interaction. Like you have the opportunity to just be here wherever you are in the world. You don't have to fly to a concert. You know, you don't have to buy a train ticket to some venue. You can just exactly. put on your headset and suddenly you're in the same instance as the artist. It's refreshing, it's super cool. It's wild, and yeah, it's... Uh, somebody told me a couple months ago, back in the... before the internet, right? You would have these hotspots of music, which were venues. You would go out on a Saturday night with friends, go to these venues, and you'd hear some right. freaking band that you don't never heard of before, and they are amazing, and then uh, one day they are the Beatles, or whatever, you know? <laughs> and I feel right. like we're having a revival of that, in this space that we live in with VR chat, with virtual reality in general. It's a new underground scene with a lot of different havens, be it the DJ haven or be it the performer haven. It brings right. people together and it's a new it's a new venue. You know, it's a new culture surrounding. It's so exciting. Absolutely. We're in such a pioneer position with performance, like how we perform, where we perform as VR musicians, right? how we generate revenue streams as VR musicians, how we market uh, our stuff. It's so new that we are far ahead of the industry. So I couldn't even say what the industry could do better because we are making, we are paving the way for the industry. <laughs> but yeah, you just released your second full album. Uh, tell us what to expect with the new album. Uh, wh like what was the inspiration behind like a lot of the tracks? All of the music I write about is inspired by relationships, so friendship and love relationships in VR, be it long distance, be it parasocial relationships. I got VR during COVID, like a lot of people, and it completely changed my life. It made me new friends from all over the world. It made me open up to my own sexuality in a way. It very much gave me the drive to make music like I do it now. And I want to dedicate whispers and everything that I produce to this beautiful thing that we are doing in this medium from a musical perspective like the, the lyrics i write uh, i i try to make them also understandable for people that have nothing to do with vr you know i don't want to write about tracker glitches or controller <laughs> overheating or whatever you know like i don't want to be that right. specific yeah <laughs> i do want normies to be able to listen to my songs and, and connect to it but yeah it's amazing <laughs> um are there any musicians that inspire your work or is there anyone um, that you really look up like look up to in the music industry so i think i grew up musically with owl city i listened to a lot of owl city my dad was into radiohead i listened to a lot of radiohead ed sheeran 
even though I don't like the new albums, oh, yeah. I think the first two albums, Ed Sheeran albums, fantastic. And I'm a massive Placebo fan. I don't know, do you know Placebo? Like, I love Placebo so much. Uh, I think I've heard of a few of their songs. Yeah. Um, what have been some of the most memorable moments uh, just throughout your entire creative journey with music? Honestly, first one that pops into my mind, um, Fox Boy was played uh, at a radio station. This radio station reaches like two to three million people every single day. Whispers gibt Konzerten vor tausenden Fans, aber keiner steht vor seiner Bühne, weil die Bühne ist in seinem Wohnzimmer. Er streamt die Konzerte als virtueller Fuchs und das kann sich musikalisch als auch grafisch echt sehen lassen. And just knowing that a song about Fox Boys on the internet is, <laughs> is being played to that <laughs> crowd of normies is gives me satisfaction deep inside. <laughs> We were so lucky to have you um, join us at Ferality Silva last year. And since then, you performed at Forcella, uh, Golden Leaves Con over in Switzerland. Like, what has that journey been like for you? Something I talk to with, let's call them normie musicians, right? Non furry, non VR musicians. They for are sure. baffled by, you know, hearing that I am given the opportunity by furry conventions to play in Sweden, play in England, play in the States. That's not average. <laughs> <laughs> that is very abnormal right. and it's very cool. <laughs> Bye.